Good afternoon. This is the regular meeting of the City Council. It is Thursday, January 20th. The meeting of the City Council, the Library and Observatory Board, Housing Authority Board, and the City Council representing the Redevelopment Successor Agency. We will have the flag salute. And if you will, be led by our Director of Development, Jeremy Gleim. Thank you, Mayor. Everybody, please stand. Ready? Begin. Christy, may we have a roll call, please? Certainly. Council Member Downs? Present. Council Member Kite? Here. Council Member Smotrich? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Townsend? Here. Mayor Weil? Here. The first order of business today will be a presentation by the Riverside County Sheriff's Department and recognition of Lieutenant Wilson and introduction of Lieutenant Myers, if you would, please, gentlemen. Uh, Mr. Mayor, while they come down, um, Jason, am I going to be able to share my screen? Yes, he will, sir. All right. I can't see the, oh, there we go. Hey, guys, thank you for uh, coming in today. Um, First, we'll uh, thank our outgoing lieutenant, uh, Lieutenant Wilson. Uh, lieutenant Wilson has been a uh, fantastic asset to our city. Um, out of all the years uh, that I've had the pleasure of working with the Sheriff's Department, by far, uh, he was the most uh, responsive uh, lieutenant that we've had uh, at the city of Rancho Mirage. He cared deeply for our community, and uh, that came through in uh, how we approached his work and how we approached concerns uh, and the needs of our community. Um, he is moving on. Uh, we are losing him to our neighbor, uh, so he will still be close, but uh, he was uh, selected to rotate into the city of Palm Desert Lieutenant after their re Lieutenant retired, uh, but it's not all bad news. Uh, standing next to him is Lieutenant Sean Myers. Uh, Lieutenant Myers was our sergeant here in Rancho Mirage for many years, uh, so it's more of a homecoming uh, for him and for us. Uh, but uh, I would like to take a minute uh, just to thank Lieutenant Wilson, and I'm going to just share my screen really quick. Can you guys see my screen? Yep. All right. Uh, so as I touched on briefly, uh, he oversaw all aspects of uh, the city's uh, law enforcement contract with the Riverside County Sheriff's Department. And uh, one of the things that I think uh, uh, Lieutenant Wilson excelled at was uh, enhancing uh, some of our public outreach programs and uh, really utilizing our community service officers uh, and just being in the community and being a resource for the community. Uh, we hosted numerous events for the community, uh, Coffee with a Cop. We also uh, focused on our uh, home safety assessments for residents. Uh, so through uh, the Sheriff's Department and through the city for free, any resident can have uh, one of our um, community service officers come out to their home and give them advice on how they can better protect their homes. Uh, very valuable for our full-time residents, uh, also for our seasonal uh, residents as well. Uh, there's very simple things that you can do to protect your property uh, and make it easier to protect your property. And uh, you get to talk directly with the experts and Lieutenant Wilson uh, had a focus on this program for our community. Uh, a lot of the issues that we deal with are property crime related, uh, which kind of gets into the next uh, key projects that he was able to accomplish during uh, his time with us. Uh, so under Lieutenant Wilson, we uh, implemented a very robust 
uh, automated license plate reading program. We did give an overview to the Cove Commission uh, yesterday at their meeting about some of the um, enhancements to our community that this uh, program has brought. Uh, it is a great investigative tool. Uh, it gives our officers and deputies that we do have uh, the ability to uh, identify suspects and solve crimes more quickly. Uh, this program would not be where it's at without uh, Lieutenant Wilson's help. And then the other uh, key program that we implemented was the Knoxbox Safety Program. That basically allows immediate access for our deputies into gated communities. So if there is a gate, uh, no longer will they have to be, wait to be let into the gate. Uh, they now have a system in place where under emergencies, they can gain immediate access or if someone's in need of service, immediate access. We already had a program like this in place for our ambulance service, uh, but now we've implemented it for our sher sheriff service as well. So if uh, an, a residential alarm goes off in the middle of the night, there's no more waiting for a guard to let us into a gated community. They can gain access immediately through this program. Uh, we retrofitted uh, through this program and under the lieutenant's uh, uh, watch over 130 gates within the city with uh, this system. So lieutenant, a, uh, a, a big thank you um, from all of us at the city. You're gonna do great things uh, for the city of Palm Desert like you did here, and we're gonna miss you. So I, I can't hear anyone else. <laughs> um, Mayor, before we uh, introduce uh, Lieutenant Sean Myers, uh, do any of the council have anything to say? Uh, I will, Chris, I think we've had chats from time to time over the years. Uh, you know how we feel about law enforcement in Rancho Mirage. Uh, we consider it a family, and you have been a major part of the family. And we can't thank you enough for all of your dedication. And uh, as Isaiah said, you're not going very far, so we're pleased about that. And likewise, uh, we feel that Sean is coming home, uh, basically. Uh, I still think of Sean as a sergeant, and now he's a, a lieutenant, and we're very proud of him. So we thank you both very much. Is there anybody else that would like to make any comments? All right. Again, thank you, Isaiah. If you want to make any closing comments. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, I'll ask uh, uh, Lieutenant Myers to come up and, and maybe uh, talk a little bit about his background. Uh, uh, but before we do, uh, Chris, is there anything that you uh, want to say at the podium? Hey, Isaiah, uh, Mayor, City Leadership, uh, just two words. Thank you. Uh, yeah. All right, a few more than two, right? <laughs> uh, from the bottom of my heart, it's been an absolute pleasure uh, serving with, with the leadership here, with all of your staff, uh, residents of Ranch Mirage have been absolutely stunning uh, been a true blessing and uh, far and away the best uh, tour of service I have had thus far so that uh, that is due to, to you guys and your leadership uh, and allowing me to uh, you know make all of this possible is a uh, is a true partnership so thank you very much and you're you're in very very good hands with Sean so very pleased to see where it's going thank you again oh thank you Chris and congratulations thank you. Thank you. Okay, if I might say one word or two, just to thank, uh, all of our thank yous go to Chris. Um, he has done a remarkable job, as Isaiah pointed out. Uh, we get so many compliments for uh, the work he has done and the connection he has created through so many of our residents. It has been a pleasure every step of the way he has um, been there, and we can't thank him enough. Thank you again, and, and we wish you all the very best. Thank you very much. Greatly appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. Sean. Thank you, Lieutenant. Uh, yes. Um, four years ago this month, I stood before you with uh, departing words. Uh, it was a bittersweet moment for me at that time because I was leaving behind many established friendships and great memories. <clears throat> 
Um, but with that said, I'm very happy to be back. I look forward to picking up where Chris is leaving off um, and carrying the mission forward. Uh, I, I, like I said, I, I'm ecstatic to be back and uh, our partnership uh, that we've established over the years is outstanding. And uh, I look forward to moving that forward. For those that don't know me um, here, I know most everybody and I've worked with. Um, I have 23 years with the Sheriff's Department. I've held every rank up to Lieutenant. Um, I've been uh, uh, assigned to various assignments uh, across the county. So I do have a little background. Uh, I'm a native uh, of the desert. Uh, I have somebody very special to me that resides here in the city of Rancho Mirage. So just know that you'll be in good hands. And uh, again, I look forward to being back. Thank you, Sean. We're happy to have you back. We feel like, uh, let's say, uh, you kind of return to the family here. Yeah. So thank you. Uh, thank you so much. And Chris, again, we wish you nothing but the best. Thank you both. Thank you. Thank you. The, uh, the next presentation is by the Riverside County Fire Department and Cal Fire. Introduction will be Battalion Chief Coates and Battalion Chief Tierney, uh, if you would, please. Well, good afternoon, uh, Mayor, Council Member, Staff, uh, Mike Beverland, West Division, uh, Division Chief. Uh, about June of last year, uh, I promoted from Battalion Chief uh, working in the Coves community, and now I'm uh, Pretty much in charge of the fire department for all the coves and desert hot springs and uh, what I wanted to do today is introduce you to uh, your two new battalion chiefs uh, Matt Coates and Pete Tierney so Pete Tierney is uh, lives in the in the Coachella Valley lives in Palm Desert and uh, is an immense leader his last assignment was at fire station 71 in the city of Palm Desert and uh, Prior to making some equipment changes at that location, uh, that was the busiest fire station in all of Riverside County. Uh, while Pete was there, um, he was the captain that was in charge of a fire engine, a medic patrol, and an ambulance, consummate professional, educated, just an outstanding member of the fire department and a great leader. And I couldn't be prouder that uh, Pete gets to stay in this battalion and continue to serve the, the Cove communities. So, with that, I'll introduce uh, Battalion Chief Pete Tierney. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Council Members. Uh, obviously, you have a little bit of my background. I've got 22 years with the department. Uh, I've actually worked in the city of Rancho Mirage before as a firefighter, uh, before cycling out to Palm Desert. Uh, I've been in the desert since 89, so I've been around the Cove communities for a while, and uh, the majority of my career has actually been in the Cove communities. So I'm really looking forward to serving the city of Rancho Mirage and representing the fire department for the city of Rancho Mirage. Thank you. And then uh, last but not least, uh, Battalion Chief uh, Matthew Coates. Uh, Matthew also lives in the Coachella Valley. He is uh, uh, pretty much on the same career path as, as Chief Tierney. He's worked kind of throughout the, the desert communities and all the different ranks from firefighter to engineer to fire captain and now battalion chief. Uh, he served in the cities of Norco. Uh, he served in the city of La Quinta and lastly in the city of Indio. Uh, also, uh, Chief Coates uh, is, is educated and has been just a, a consummate professional and again, a tremendous leader. And I just couldn't be prouder of these two gentlemen taking over for Chief White and I. Um, and so with that, I'll introduce uh, Chief Coates. Good afternoon, Council. Mr. Mayor, uh, thank you for having me, and it's an honor to be a service here for the city of uh, Rancho Mirage. I was uh, actually an engineer at Station 50 just down the street, and I uh, remember uh, Mr. Kite was a uh, council member then. I uh, believe I met him then. So again, happy to be here, 23 years of service, hopefully to bring uh, my education, my experience to the city of uh, Rancho Mirage. Thank you. And so with that, I just wanted to make sure that the council and staff know that these two gentlemen are available at your service whenever you need. I'll have them make sure that the contact information that they have with uh, will get to you all. And so any uh, event that you need to, to talk to them, please do. 
um, I, I feel very confident that they're going to do a great job for the city of Rancho Mirage. Chief, thank you so much. Uh, I will say this, that it, there is hardly a week or days that go by that we don't get compliments about the service that you perform. When you go out on a call and perform your duties uh, with our residents, they just cannot say enough about your professionalism and how well you handled the issue. So we get a lot of credit for the outstanding work that you do. I, I want to give a little shout out to a couple of other people that, again, are employed by Cal Fire uh, that have come close to uh, a number of us, and that's Charles Essling, the lead CERT instructor, and Thomas Elridge, the CERT instructor, uh, who work closely with Brian Kephart in our code enforcement. They've done a fabulous job uh, teaching the CERT training. Uh, the, uh, I've had the privilege of taking both the training and the renewal, and they are just terrific. And so again, another example of the wonderful work that you do and how you represent this community. So we can't say enough good things and we wish you nothing but the best. Thank you. Well, very good, Mayor, thank you. Uh, in addition to these introductions, we also wanted to give you a quick presentation on uh, the operations of your uh, ladder truck, and Chief Coates is gonna make that presentation. Thank you. So good afternoon, I wanna pr present the uh, Cove Communities uh, ladder truck, which is the new ladder truck built in 2020 and it's housed at station 33 in uh, Palm Desert, which is the station next to the mall there. So ladder 33 is a ladder truck, is a 2020 KME TDA ladder truck, has 101 vertical reach. That means that when the ladder is fully extended and you see the ladder on top of the uh, truck there, it reaches 101 feet. And we have some of those obstacles here in the city of Rancho Mirage and surrounding areas where we need that capability. It's 57 feet overall in length, and it does have two steering wheels. And why do, you, why do we need two steering wheels for uh, something that large? Well, it's because we have some tight areas where we need to be able to maneuver that ladder truck. We have a steering wheel in the front in the cab, and then the tiller box in the rear. You see it kind of propped up in the back. So a firefighter sits back there and is able to steer the back wheels to make it more maneuverable. So it's 74,000 uh, pounds in, uh, in weight, and the uh, passenger compartment com consists of uh, uh, airbags, which allows a smoother, more comfortable ride to the firefighters within. So some of the specs for the, uh, the ladder truck, it's powered by a 600 horsepower Cummins diesel engine. It makes it more fi fuel efficient, uh, 65 gallons of diesel, that's 15 gallons more than the previous ladder truck. And that's a beneficial for us so we don't have to spend so much time filling up the fire truck or the ladder truck. We can spend more time responding to emergencies and training and station duties. Also has a 10,000 watt generator and we can use that for lighting. And as you can see, the lighting uh, package also consists of the uh, ladder, which you see there illuminated, uh, which uh, provides firefighter safety and visibility. So some of the other specs that we have is a clean cab concept. We don't like, we don't want our firefighters to store their turnout gear within the, the ladder truck itself. It helps for the longevity and the health of the firefighters within. And with the, uh, has also has a high angle attachment points. And with that, have the ability to uh, take or pick people off of uh, tall buildings, rescue people off of tall buildings or trees. Or, uh, and also has the, uh, the engineer, as you see on the right, has a screen which allows them to be able to uh, properly and safely, efficiently place the ladder where, the, where it's needed. Has 500 cubic feet of uh, compartment storage, which is larger than the previous ladder truck. We could carry more of our specialized rescue equipment, which includes the jaws of life, uh, which we could uh, utilize for any type of uh, auto extrication. Also has 260 feet of ground ladders, and you see that there within the, the back of the ladder truck. 
And then you see the uh, aerial ladder in action there, which we could utilize to get to high points. So some of the truck uses, uh, we have uh, elevator rescues, which we have quite a few elevators here in the city of Rancho Mirage. Uh, vertical ventilation, search and rescue, uh, water salvage, uh, technical rescues. Also, we have, uh, we utilize the ladder truck up Highway 74. We have quite a few calls up there with uh, vehicles going over the side. So that's a huge assessment for our, uh, excuse me, a huge uh, um, benefit for us to have that ladder truck available. So some of the uh, remaining pictures that we have here is on the left, you see the, the ladder truck stored at the station 33. Um, the lower right, you can see how the wheels kind of pivot off to the right to make it more maneuverable. And then again, the ladder in action with the, uh, at, at, uh, to go to a, a, an extended or elevated platform for uh, ease of service. So the, the new ladder truck with the uh, with extending that ladder, we could put that up in about 60 seconds. So it, it could be put up pretty quick. So with that, that's my presentation. Be happy to answer any questions if you have them. Well, thank you very much. Very complete. Uh, it's exciting and it's wonderful that we have the uh, capability of that truck uh, in, in the city. So thank you again, Chief, for uh, for the excellent explanation. Anybody have any other questions for the chief? Chief, one brief question. You said that the uh, unit is used on Highway 74 a lot? Yes, sir. For what, uh, what purpose is it used? So if we have a vehicle that goes over the side, which happens quite often, we have uh, technical rescue equipment within the ladder truck. We have ropes, rigging, to be able to get a firefighter down to the car that has gone over Highway 74 and be able to safely and efficiently uh, package the patient up and bring them back up to the road, uh, roadside. Great, more than just putting out fires. No Correct, doubt. multiple uses. We could like to call it a toolbox. So it has quite a few tools within and uh, we have very qualified and capable people uh, manning, the, uh, manning the call. We support you all, you do, guys do a great job. Thank you very much. Again, Chief, thank you so much. Thank you both for being here. Uh, we wish you nothing but the best. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we will now go to non-agenda council uh, public comments. Uh, Christy, are you holding any requests? No, I'm not. Okay, do you see anybody from the public requesting? Yes, Mr. Mayor, uh, Brad Anderson, go ahead. Yes, uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Brad Anderson. I live in the city of Ranch Mirage. And just a little housekeeping I wanted to mention that uh, prior city council meeting, the one before the last cancer meeting, <laughs> there was some discussion concerning the Frank Sinatra Bridge uh, project that was being uh, hopefully eliminated or delayed. Uh, I just wanted this to remind everybody in the city, this was a first team effort from the city council and the city manager to have that project go forward before that last meeting. But I'm, I'm thankful that it has been ceased. Uh, and of course the city manager or city mayor, you know, mentioned that uh, it would be a big expenditure from the city uh, reserves, which it would have been, but also, uh, I would remind everybody that there is a car dealership going in where funds were used and other aspects of the Great Plates, and, and I doubt the city was reimbursed with the Great Plates money from the federal government yet, FEMA, I believe, uh, but that I may be misunderstood there, too, and other aspects of city funds being expended to private organizations. and. So uh, I don't want to beat up on you too bad, but <laughs> but uh, I, I just wanted uh, to emphasize that maybe uh, a little more uh, inside information might be uh, might be the best way to go in the future, and and that and that's concerning a special meeting that was held today of the city council, which was before today's meeting, and a lot of people may not even be aware of that, but definitely look for that. That's concerning the. Uh, the tourism board and, and, and its commitment to the city and the city commitment to its uh, organization too. So, and uh, I want to talk about election stuff, but I'm not going to, I'm going to wait on that because I got some bombshells, but anyway, I'll, I'll mention that later. And thank you very much for letting me speak. Thank you for your comments. 
Uh, is there anybody in the audience that uh, would like to make any non-agenda public comments that did not turn in a form? Seeing none. We do have one more speaker remotely, Katie Stice. Okay. Please go ahead. We can't hear you yet, Katie. Just one moment, Mr. Mayor. Yes. Just one moment. Jason, are you able to get Katie on? Trying to work over right now. Uh, Mr. Mayor, if uh, if it's okay, uh, perhaps Katie's the last speaker, so perhaps we can uh, move on with council member comments and then come back and see if we can get Katie. Sure. When, whenever she's available, we'll uh, we'll work that in. Okay. Thank you. All right. In the meantime, we will uh, we will uh, then transition to uh, council board member comments. Uh, I'll start with Iris. Do you have any? Well, I just have one small comment, and it is a show and tell because in case uh, people are not aware of it, we are now in operation with our In-N-Out Burger, and everyone is thrilled that I've spoken to. We've gotten lots of compliments. Uh, people can't be more pleased with the professionalism and the speed with which they're getting their food. But I also wanted to make one comment about something very serious that they are on a campaign to handle, and that is human trafficking. And they have signs out in front that if, if you wish to make a contribution, they will match your contribution by three times. So if that's something you're interested in and you would like to make a contribution to in and out uh, they would be most thrilled, and they will be thrilled to match your contribution uh, times three. So enjoy yourself, enjoy the hamburgers and french fries, and uh, just stay healthy, and uh, I wish you all the best. Thank you, Ted. Thank you. Charlie? Yes, Mr. Mayor, I do. Thank you. Desert Theatricals brings pure entertainment to the Rancho Mirage Amphitheater once again with a fantastic lineup for the 2022 season. Tickets are on sale now for three fabulous upcoming shows with a dinner theater option. Mamma Mia is the first up on February the 18th and 19th. The musical features hits of the widely popular 70s Swedish pop dance group ABBA and a romantic story that is. Enjoy the songs and the dances of this ever popular production. Sorry to say, although the dinner show tickets for this performance are sold out, however, general admission seats are still available for purchase. Moving on to on March 18th and 19th, we'll have some Sharp shooting at Buffalo Bill's Wild West show with Annie Oakley and Frank Butler in the classic Irving Berlin's musical Annie Gets Your Gun. Dinner theater and general admission seats are available for both performances. If you haven't seen the hysterical long-running musical comedy, which is the third in the series, A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Forum, you are in for a great treat. Dinner theater and general admission seats are available for the April 15th and 16th show. Gates open at 5.30 p.m. 
and these performances begin at 7.30. Dinner theater ticket holders will enjoy waiter-served meals at the reserve tables in the first three tiers of the amphitheater, provided by Aqua California Bistro. General admission ticket holders can purchase food from Taka Tacos or Aqua California Bistro. Beverages will be available for purchase provided by Aqua California Bistro on an on-site bar. General admission, open seating, and advance tickets are $50 plus a processing fee. General admission tickets can also be purchased at the door for $55 if seats are available. Reserved dinner theater seating prices are $115 per seat for tables of four or six, plus a processing fee. If you are Rancho Mirage residents, you will receive a 15% discount, a 15% discount on general admission tickets. Tickets must be purchased at the Ranch Mirage Library. Proof of residency is required. And if you have any questions for further information, the stuff I haven't covered, please call area code 760-620-5993. That is 760-620-5993. Or email info at deserttheatricals.com. I hope to see all of you out there enjoying these wonderful, entertaining productions and taking advantage of our beautiful amphitheater and our gorgeous weather. Our amphitheater is the Hollywood Bowl right here in the Miller of the Coachella Valley. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Charlie. And again, I appreciate you using my Hollywood Bowl line. You Charlie will. is the major plagiarist of all time. Uh, no, only from the best. And he does it with a smile, so how can you not applaud? <clears throat> uh, Richard, if you would, please. Thank you. Charlie, we love you. That's okay. Don't worry. Thank you, Richard, for sticking up for me. He's always picking on me. <laughs> Thanks, Mayor. Uh, we have some exciting update on our parks and trails. The Wolfson Park Expansion Project is nearing completion, and construction is scheduled to commence in, in the spring of 2022. Wolfson Park is located at the intersection of Duval Drive and Frank Sinatra Drive. At the Commission's request, Staff installed a sign at the entrance to the park, and this has really gotten everybody excited because it goes into the details of what's happening in the park expansion. We have many hikes, hikers uh, in the area, and they enjoy the, the uh, various trails around. With the cooperation of the Friends of the Desert Mountains, there are guide, uh, to several of the uh, trails that are the more accessible in the area. The guided trails in, are in Rancho Mirage are the Chuckawalla Trail, Blixith Park, Bighorn Outlook, and Jackrabbit Trail. For more information and to sign up, visit www.desertmountaintrail.org calendar. So they're open all day. Obviously, you can get some great trails up and behind Rancho Mirage, and there's some good leadership there, too. So get out and enjoy our city. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Richard. And now, Steve uh, Downs, our newest member of the City Council, and his first Council comments at the board meeting. Welcome, Steve. Thank you. Thank you, Ted. Yes, I do have some comments. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so at the uh, December 16th special council meeting, uh, when council interviewed candidates, I said that uh, uh, whoever might be appointed to uh, fill, fill the balance of Dana Hobart's term would stand in the shadow of a giant. And I now occupy this chair, and I'm, I'm mindful of a couple of issues that are important to me. Uh, first, I'm mindful that there is no replacement for Dana Hobart. 
uh, Dana is truly a, a legend in the lore of this city. Uh, and I'm also mindful that while I am a, uh, a, a poor replacement, I, I do have an obligation to him and an obligation to the four of you who appointed me. And that, of course, is the obligation to do the best job that I can uh, for the people of this city and to always bear in mind uh, a guiding principle on every decision I make and every vote that I cast, which is uh, to do so in the best interest of this city and the, and the best interest of the future of this city. Uh, one other comment that I wanted to make is that we also uh, are obligated as citizens of the globe uh, to do what we can to stem the spread of this miserable pandemic. Uh, and if we all took uh, the advice a little more each day of our health professionals and uh, did a little more social distancing and wearing masks and hand washing, uh, we might be able to reduce the death count in the future from this pandemic. Uh, and so if we thought about wearing a mask not as uh, an impediment, but as a way to uh, save lives in the future, maybe it might be easier for us to wear the mask now and then. Uh, and if uh, people like uh, uh, Martin Luther King or, or Mother Teresa were alive today, uh, as uh, would any of, the, of history's great humanitarians, you can bet that they would be showing the example for all of us. They would be wearing a mask today to save a life tomorrow. And the last thing that I wanted to talk about uh, on a lighter note is uh, what Iris had mentioned which is the in and out. Thanks for wearing that hat, Iris. That was, that was cool, I like that. Uh, so um, like, um, uh, like our, uh, uh, city uh, our city manager and our mayor uh, who went to uh, in and out on the Friday that it opened, I too went on that Friday. Now I didn't go in the restaurant, what I did is I went through the drive through because I wanted to get a first hand feel for what traffic would be like on that day in that shopping center. And to be sure, that uh, drive through line was fairly long, but it was contained in the shopping center. It took me about 25 minutes to work my way through the line uh, and, uh, and get my lunch. Now, what I observed that day is that in and out did exactly what they said they would do. That uh, drive through lane was confined to the shopping center. Traffic flowed smoothly in that shopping center, and I did not witness any evidence of traffic stacking or a traffic impediment on the adjacent roadways. And I've made it a point to go through the shopping center several times since at several different hours during the day. And I have never witnessed any issue of traffic problem in or around that shopping center. So thank you to In-N-Out for standing up to their promise to, uh, uh, to protect us uh, with respect to traffic control. And by the way, the double-double that I had for lunch that day was pretty <laughs> darn good. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Well, thank you. Thank you, Steve. And you made a contribution regarding uh, In-N-Out uh, as your position on the uh, Planning Commission previously. So welcome, uh, and I know your uh, uh, inauguration on the City Council uh, is already seamless, and you're correct. Uh, Dana Hobart is a irreplaceable force, but um, you will do just fine. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ted. <clears throat> I'll conclude by saying that um, one last thing, that um, on January 27, 1945, the Auschwitz, the largest concentration and death camp, was liberated by the Russian Red Army. Of the 1.3 million individuals, basically Jewish um, individuals, that sent to Auschwitz, 1.1 million died. This January, uh, there is a remembrance uh, at the Palm Desert Civic Park uh, at 1 p.m. Uh, where myself and the mayor of Palm Desert and Palm Springs will also be speaking. It's a day, uh, sadly, uh, that uh, a, an atrocity that we never want to forget. So I, I mention that uh, for any of you that are out and about. Uh, if you want to pay homage, it will be on January 27. That concludes my comments. I believe that concludes our council comments, and I will now go to the city manager comments if he has any. Uh, I do, Mr. Mayor, but. Uh... I understand that Katie Stice is now here and available, so uh, I would like to take her non-agenda public comment at this time. Uh, sure. If you're okay with that. That would be great. Katie, are you there? 
I'm here. Can you hear me? We can. Go ahead. Perfect. Um, Mayor Weil, council members, city staff, guests in attendance, and virtually. My name is Katie Stey, CEO at the Rancho Mirage Chamber of Commerce, and I just wanted to take a moment to wish everyone a healthy and happy new year and give a formal welcome to our new council member, Steve Downs. It was a pleasure to have you attend today's chamber board meeting virtually. Uh, thank you to Mayor Weil, Mayor Pro Tem Townsend for introducing him at that meeting. Um, I'd also like to extend a thank you to Lieutenant Willison for all of his care to the community, a welcome to Lieutenant uh, Myers and special thanks to our fire department as well. And have a great Chamber of Commerce Day, Rancho Mirage. Thank you. Thank you, Katie, very much. Um, you're, you're a wonder. We cannot say enough about the contribution that the Chamber makes to the city of Rancho Mirage, to the support of the businesses. Uh, it was a great meeting this morning. I'm glad we had the opportunity uh, to introduce Council Member Downs and uh, once again to meet all of the, uh, the board members. So thank you so much. Uh, I'll now go back to you, uh, Mr. City Manager, for any comments. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just two comments uh, from me today. <clears throat> the first one is I just wanted to acknowledge and uh, thank city staff uh, who throughout this pandemic have figured out a way uh, to continue the city operations and be available uh, to the public. Uh, so that continues. Uh, city Hall currently is uh, still by appointment only. That will run through next week as well. Uh, but city staff is doing everything they can to help people remotely. Uh, and I just appreciate all their efforts in being flexible and still serving our community during these uh, difficult times. So thank you to all the city staff. The uh, next item that I have, let me share my screen. So I'd like to uh, recognize someone that we all depend on greatly. So I wanted to uh, congratulate our uh, Director of Information Services, Jason Hadigay. Uh, Jason was selected by the InfoTech Research Group for the 2021 CIO Award for the Small Business Division. Uh, this is uh, a very um, hard award to get. Uh, many people qualify for it. Um, our level of government fits in uh, this division along with other businesses. And uh, as we all know and have seen, uh, Jason does a great job for our city, uh, not only in keeping up with what we need to do uh, to keep the city network safe and secure, but also many of our projects, um, we've had uh, many other uh, cities and uh, special districts come in to see what Jason has put in place when it comes to uh, how we run our servers, how we do our backups, how we secure our data, um, and some of the security protocols that Jason has in place. He's done previous presentations for the city council that shows how often the city's network is attempted to be breached. Um, and as we see in the newspaper more and more, uh, local government is becoming a huge target for um, hackers and ransomware, uh, whereby they come in and basically shut you down and demand payment in order to get your system back. So Jason has been working on this for years uh, and protecting our city, and he does a great job for us. So this award is uh, definitely uh, well-deserved, Jason. Uh, so thank you for everything you've uh, done for the city of Ranch Mirage. Jason has over 20 years of uh, governmental service. Um, he's an expert in uh, this field. He's recognized by many of his colleagues uh, for being an expert. And I know he's a resource for quite a few people uh, in other uh, cities that uh, are around us. So Jason, congratulations uh, on receiving this award. It's definitely well-deserved. And uh, there's a picture of Jason when he was uh, picked as employee of the year uh, with then Mayor Kite. So Jason, congratulations. And that's all I have today. Yes, Does that conclude the comments? 
Yes, that's all I have today. All right, thank you. Uh, the next item of business will be um, the minutes of December 16th. If there are no additions or subtractions, alterations to the minutes, uh, I'll entertain a motion to approve. Move approval of the December 16th council minutes. There's, there's a motion and a second. I will second. And there's a second. Uh, roll call, please. Council Member Downs. Christy, is it appropriate that I vote uh, since I did not sit in on the entire uh, uh, meeting the last time I, I was only appointed for the last few minutes of that meeting? You can still vote on this. Okay. All right. That, yes. Approved. Council Member Kite. Yes. Council Member Smotrich. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Townsend. Yes. Mayor Weil. Yes. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you. Next item of business is the consent calendar, and if you will, Isaiah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Members of the City Council, you have eight items on your consent calendar for consideration. Item number one is to waive the full reading of all ordinances introduced or adopted pursuant to this agenda. Item number two is to adopt ordinance number 1192, second reading, levying special taxes within City of Rancho Mirage Community Facilities District number five. This relates to the section 31 project. Item number three is to adopt joint resolution number next in order, making findings pursuant to government code section 54953 as amended by assembly bill 361 and authorizing continued remote teleconference meetings of the city council and all affiliated agencies and all other city affiliated Brown Act bodies in accordance with AB 361 during the current state of emergency related to the COVID-19 pandemic. Item number four is to adopt resolution number 2022, next in order, authorizing the submittal of applications for all Cal Recycle payment programs and related authorizations for which the city of Rancho Mirage is eligible. This resolution allows us to submit for grants through Cal Recycle. Item number five is the final acceptance of the Tamaris Neighborhood Pavement Rehabilitation City Project CP19348. Item number six is the receive and file of the annual comprehensive financial report for the year ended June 30th, 2021 and other related audit reports. Item number seven are contracts and item number eight are demands. Uh, before we go to council uh, questions or comments, we will open up the public comment period on the consent calendar. If any member of the public would like to speak on one of these items, now is the time to do so. If you are participating remotely, you would hit the raise hand button on Zoom or star nine on your telephone. Christy, will you do the in-person uh, public comment, please? Yes, uh, I have no speaker cards. Does anyone here in person wish to speak on the consent calendar? No one wishes to speak on the consent calendar. Okay, we do have someone on the remote audience and uh, Brad Anderson, go ahead. Hi, uh, Brad Anderson, City of Rancho Mirage. Um, I want to speak on consent calendar item number three, and that's the continuation of aspects of AB3. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm reading it the way I wrote it. But anyway, the continuous of AB361 uh, to uh, really conduct uh, remote meetings. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm opposed to this, and the reason is not for the public aspect, but for the uh, for the sitting city council, elected officials. Uh, they should make themselves available. Uh, if social distancing is the narrative, which it is, uh, it doesn't make sense that uh, part of the city council would be in attendance and part would not be because the, the venues stay the same. So it's either safe or it's not safe. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm concerned that this aspect, well, AB 361 is really being abused by many of the city councilors within the state, and, and it appears that Ransom Mirage is doing the same. So, and, and again, the, the narrative is social distancing. It's not mask. Uh, I heard a council member messing about mask, uh, and, 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 and that's not the aspect of this AB 361. So I'm opposed to this, and, uh, 
and I will be until you do not uh, establish it any further. Thank you very much. Thank you for, Thank your, you for comment. your comment. Uh, we have no other speakers, Mr. Mayor, so we'll close the public comment period on the consent calendar, and I will return this to you and the council. Uh, thank you, Isaiah. Is there anybody on the council that would like to make any comments regarding the consent calendar? I see none. May I have a motion to approve the consent calendar? I will make a motion to accept the consent calendar as read. Second. And I'll second that. There is a motion and a second. Roll call, please. Christy. Council Member Downs. Approved. Council Member Kite. Approved. Council Member Smotrich. Approved. Mayor Pro Tem Townsend. Yes. Mayor Weil. Yes. Motion carries 5 0. Thank you. The next item will be an action item, uh, and that will be uh, handled by Ryan Stendell, our Director of Public Works. And that involves the initiation of a general street vacation proceedings for a 30 foot easement positioned on a portion of property located at 39 125 Vista Dunes Road. Ryan, if you would, please. Well, um, good afternoon, Honorable Mayor and Council Members. Um, sound, sounds like the mayor just gave my staff report. Um, and in all honesty, uh, staff is received a request from the owner of 39125 Vista, Dune Ro Vista Dunes Road to uh, vacate a 30-foot access easement that runs the width of his property. Um, staff has investigated the request and concurs with the property owner that this access easement is no longer necessary. It was dedicated to the city back in 1973 uh, and in today's condition uh, is not necessary anymore. Um, via this staff report and attached resolution, uh, staff is recommending approval of beginning that vacation process. You have my staff report supporting documents, and I'd be happy to answer any questions the council has. Is there any Thank financial you. impact to the city of Rancho Mirage? No, sir. All right. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, we'll go ahead and open up the uh, public comment period on this item. If any member of the public wishes to speak on this item, now is the time to do so. If you're participating remotely, you would hit the raise hand button on Zoom or star nine on your telephone. Christy, will you please do the in-person uh, audience? Yes, I do have, I do not have any speaker cards. Is there anyone in the audience who wishes to speak? And there is no one. Okay, we don't have anyone on our remote audience, so we'll close the public comment period and I'll turn this over to you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Is there anybody uh on the council that would like to make any comment on this item. I have a question, if I may. Yes, please, okay. Steve. So, Ryan, if I understand this correctly, uh, this would have been a 30-foot uh, wide easement for a city street that is not needed, and that's the reason for vacating this easement? Correct. Uh, you would have had 30 feet on this property and 30 feet on the, on the property to the north. Um, if you look at how the area has developed in the real world, there are some houses that would make a road in this area literally impossible to build. Um, and uh, so staff is recommending that it's not needed, one, and two, that we could begin the vacation process. Okay. I'm looking at the uh, photo on uh, page 15 of section 9, and it looks like that easement runs behind three different parcels. Are we vacating the easement on all three parcels or only one? With this action this afternoon, it's on just the one parcel. I would make the caveat that staff would be favorable to, uh, to the vacation process on all three. Um, however, various property owners may care that it's there or may not, depending on how their property is being developed. If you're not putting a structure there, there's really no impact. Uh, in this case, the property owner has some development plans that would require that easement to be gone. Got it. So it's up to the other property owners to request yes. a vacation of the easement if they choose to do so. Absolutely. Understand. Thank you. Yeah, and just to add to that, there are some legal requirements for the property owner. So this property that we're talking about today recently uh, sold. And so uh, the new property owner uh, is requesting that it be removed. They have to provide legal descriptions and survey reports and things like that to the city, uh, which does cost money. Uh, so if those other property owners wanted to come through and follow the same process, they absolutely could, but it's not as easy as just a request. They have to uh, go put together the necessary reports for the city. Thank you, Isaiah. Are there any other uh, council comments? 
Uh, if there are none, I'll entertain a motion uh, uh, to approve uh, item nine. Well, I'll make a motion that the city council adopt resolution number 20, 22 next in order. Similar vacating approximately 9.230 square feet of access right of way located approximately 300 feet north of Halco Dunes and Vista Dunes intersection and running approximately 315 feet westward of Vista Dunes. I'll second. Uh, there's a motion and a second. Christy, roll call, please. Council Member Downs? Approved. Council Member Kite? Yes. Council Member Smartrich? Yes. Mayor Pro Tim Townsend? Yes. Mayor Weil? Yes. Motion carries 5 0. Thank you. Uh, the next item will be uh, consideration of a memorandum of understanding with Curative for COVID 19 testing. Uh, Gabe Cotting, our Director of Marketing, will handle that. Gabe, if you would, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Council. Uh, today, if the City Council desires to bring back a COVID-19 testing site at the Ranch Mirage Library and Observatory, then uh, they must authorize the City Manager to execute the Memorandum of Understanding, the MOU, attached to the staff report. Curative, who previously administered the COVID-19 testing site, had, has provided this draft and has estimated it would be open within about three weeks of an executed agreement. Uh, staff anticipates costs of about 5000 per month, and this includes the, the uh, tops and barricades, the electric, electronic signage, and any equipment rental to properly administrate that site off the Highway 111 corridor. Uh, Curative currently administers COVID-19 testing sites in La Quinta, Indio, Palm Desert, Cathedral City, also has mobile, uh, mobile ones that visit weekly in Palm Springs and Coachella. Um, library staff had recently compiled a list of all the Coachella Valley testing sites for patrons and callers, and callers inquiring about available COVID-19 testing, and that list is also attached to the staff report. It's also worth noting that yesterday the federal government offered uh, free at-home testing kits for per family, and those can be, uh, can be requested at covidtest.gov. Um, so that, that's the uh, information I have, and I'm, uh, concludes my report, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank, Thank you, Gabe. You. Thank you, Gabe. Uh, we'll Christy, are you holding any requests for uh, comment on this item? No, I have no speaker cards. If any member of the public that is participating remotely wishes to speak on this item, raise hand button on Zoom or star nine on your telephone. Brad Anderson, go ahead. Hi, Brad Anderson, City Ranch Mirage. Uh, I'm opposed to this. Uh, again, uh, being in that location, uh, especially being so far down from the uh, the uh, testing aspects, not debunking the testing, but uh, there are reported flaws with this type of test. And and I I I would hope that the city would not involve themselves in this in, in this type of action, I guess, uh, because there are other testing locations, and we have a hospital. <laughs> within the city boundaries that that could easily accommodate this and uh, and I understand there will be cost to the city in signage which is uh, the last testing location I noticed the signs were put in the mediums and it's quite uh, uh, a distraction I think for the drivers especially on that corner so that's an aspect uh, safety of course and uh, uh, so I, I think this is not something the city wants to accommodate, uh, especially in that location. I mean, uh, there was talk about in and out maybe over there, people would see it. Maybe that's a good thing. So, uh, yeah, I'm opposed to this. Thank you. Thank Thanks you for, for your comment. comment. We have no other speakers, Mr. Mayor, so we'll close the public comment period and I'll turn this over to you and the council. Thank you. Are there any uh, comments on the city council? Question. Yes, Richard. In reading the staff report, it looked like there are 29 sites that are currently available in the five cities surrounding Rancho Mirage. Of those 29, I think only three of them required the individual pay for that, uh, that test. Uh, is this something that we're going to see in the future where fewer and fewer are actually charged the fee? Now with this... Uh, 
government offered yesterday about free testing at home, is that going to eliminate the need for this kind of an external test? Uh, there hasn't been any any information published about that, whether the free testing sites would start to uh, diminish or not. There hasn't been any relative information to that of whether the free testing is going um, going to go away at this point or not. Looking at the list of those participants, is there some reason that the health facilities like Eisenhower are not on the list? Uh, they, go ahead. The, the, the testing site at uh, Eisenhower is for their purposes. So uh, if you're going to the hospital for some procedure or something along those lines, if you're an established patient with Eisenhower um, and you need a COVID test, it's not um, convenient. It's not like a the library site used to be that was just generally open to the public. Eisenhower doesn't get the doesn't have the staff or the quantities of tests to be able to do it for everybody. And so they reserve what they get allocated for really their purposes and their patients. Um, so you know, this potential site at the library would operate much like the last one where it's generally available. Uh, well, it is available to everyone as long as they have an appointment. Is there a minimum number of days that we have to have this contract if we approve it? The question was a minimum number of, of time, time frame. Right. They're proposing uh, July, reassess in July. So this would run from if it was approved, it would have run through middle of July and then get reassessed based upon demand. The previous agreement was always, we could mutually agree if demand wasn't there, we could discontinue it uh, within a couple weeks. So there was a mutual agreement in the last agreement that if, if there isn't the demand and, and it doesn't make sense for either party, that either party, could we could cancel it. And the best guess as far as the cost during that period of time would be 5,000 per month? Yeah, last time, because we, you know, with that getting so busy and in, and in season, we want to have the electronic signs on the medians in uh, um, right on that portion of Highway 111. You also want the cones because we do the, li the library is open, even though it's in to go model. So you're going to have patrons mingling with test takers. <clears throat> so you want to have really good signage. You want to have cones. And we rented those last time. So costs were somewhere between four and five thousand a month for uh, for the cost of that. Is staff recommending approval? Uh, staff is just presenting the information to council at this point, and they can entertain a motion. Yeah, I think, you know, from a staff perspective, um, we feel like this is more of a policy level decision. Um, where is this something that the council feels like, uh, is this a service that the council wants to provide to our community? Um, so we can absolutely implement it based on that policy decision. Uh, but there's no formal recommendation from the staff because we feel like it's more of a policy level dis uh, decision for the council and we're ready to act on whatever the council decides. Okay, I have a question for, for Gabe. Uh, since uh, so many of our residents had had problems making appointments to get tested uh, and now that uh, people are going to be getting tests delivered to their homes and now that we see uh, that La Quinta and Indio and Palm Desert and Cathedral City also uh, have testing places and that there's a mobile van that's uh, available to visit sites. Is there any chance that we could, instead of having something like this uh, a, a, as a formal presentation uh, location, uh, could we have a van that would come to our library or another designated place maybe once or twice a week for the Rancho Mirage residents since we have no other locations in Rancho Mirage that seem to be available for testing. Uh, could we bring in the van and have our Rancho Mirage residents make use of that van uh, by appointment or as a walk-in? <clears throat> Yeah, I'm uh, council member. I, I think anything would be possible. I think the thing to note would be the biggest, uh, the curative in any testing site had said staffing is the biggest issue. So regardless yeah. of what concept you went with, you're three weeks out. So I think there's you could you could argue or you could make a case for is will the demand be there in three weeks from now? 
Um, cause right, cause right now you can get appointments fairly easy. Um, as of right now, right after the holidays, they became pretty compressed and it was a lot harder, but they are getting easier. You go on the curative website right now for Palm desert and there's hundreds of, uh, of appointments available just, just over the, over the, over at the UCR campus. So, um, yeah, it just, it would, the earliest they could go to market would be three weeks from today if approved. Okay. okay. So there we can't get on a list where if we desire at a later date, maybe we could have a van come to a location for people that are unable to uh, travel to the other locations. Yeah, I don't know the availability of their mobile stations. I, I didn't inquire about that, um, but why could, we could certainly follow up with that and, uh, and bring that back at a later date. Very good, Gabe. As the, I'm looking here as the re request. It says action as deemed necessary. So it seems to me like down the road, if this is necessary, that staff would come back and ask for the installation again to be placed at the library. But as what Iris is saying and what I'm reading also, it seems like there's enough out there at this particular time to meet all the needs to have testing sites available and not necessary for us to have this. That's my take. Mr. Mayor? Thanks. Yes. Uh, in regard to Iris's comments about location in Rancho Mirage, there are actually five sites listed on the summary that staff has prepared, uh, all, right. all the way from CVS to Vault Walgreens. And so there seems to be plenty of availability. And uh, I think with the initiation of the four free uh, tests at home, uh, those people that were driving around looking for something in the past now can do it from their own home. So I, I don't think it's necessarily something that's required at this time, but I think if we evaluate the need going forward, we can make that judgment as to how the impact of the four frees was. and. Uh, I had uh, a test at uh, Eisenhower, and it was next day. So for the people who want instant testing, maybe the existing program is okay. For those who will go over a day or two, it uh, doesn't seem to be a whole lot of problems. Uh, I'm hearing uh, the, uh, uh, the mood of the council is to possibly table this item and take a look at it again in, uh, uh, in an, at another council meeting uh, in view of the fact that uh, testing uh, kits have just been sent out yesterday. A number of homes are going to be receiving them now over the course of the next few weeks. Along with the additional sites, it may not be necessary, and uh, we, can, uh, uh, we can take another look at this either at the next council meeting or two council meetings from now. Is that what I'm hearing from most, most of you? Yes, and I would second that, Mr. Mayor. Uh, if, if I may, um, uh, I was uh, one of the council members who did suggest to Isaiah that we look into this. Uh, and I can tell you that a reason that I did that uh, a, a couple of weeks ago is personal experience. Uh, at my house, uh, COVID did uh, visit and uh, my wife uh, suffered from it for a week or so. For, uh, a week or so. Fortunately, she's negative now. Uh, but I can tell you that at the time, it was remarkably difficult to find a place to get a test. Um, I did manage at one point uh, about two weeks ago to uh, get scheduled for a test at the site at uh, the Westfield, I guess it's not the Westfield Mall anymore, but you know where I mean. Uh, and um, so they did schedule me. When I got there, the... Um, car drive through testing site was closed because they had so many people who had signed up for tests that they couldn't accommodate the cars in the parking lot. So you had to get out of your car, stand in line. I got in line and I asked the first person who walked by me who had just been tested how long it took, two and a half hours. So I got out of that line and found uh, some other way to uh, accomplish the test a couple of days later. But in any event, things are unfolding rapidly. It does seem as though that there is more availability of tests today but certainly as recently as a couple of weeks ago, it was extremely difficult to arrange for a test. Uh, so I do think we need to have an open mind about this, but I'm certainly willing to, 
carry it forward to the next council meeting. We just need to be sensitive to uh, changes in, uh, uh, in the way things unfold here. Okay. Yeah. And if I can just tag on to what Steve has said, because I have my own experience and I know Richard mentioned about the different pharmacies, but if you wait in line in the pharmacy, I waited 45 minutes just to get a prescription, not even realizing uh, how long it was taking all the cars in front of me, uh, which was only four cars to uh, go through with their test. Sometimes they can't open the bottle. Sometimes they're having difficulty understanding what needs to be done. But now that things are a lot more readily available, it seems, uh, I would go along with um, putting this on a back burner and, and tabling the matter. If we do find that we have problems with people getting tested when they need to be, and uh, we can vote on it at another time if it is required. All right, thank you. Any other comments? Do we have a motion on the floor? Yes, I was just getting to that. There is a motion on the floor to table this to the uh, next meeting. Uh, we can take a look at it, uh, see if the situation has uh, improved, and if it has not improved and or has gotten worse, we can always uh, then contract with uh, curative. So Charlie has made a motion. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Uh, Richard, a second. Uh, roll call, please. Council Member Downs? Yes. Council Member Kite? Yes. Council Member Smotrich? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Townsend? Yes. Mayor Weil? Yes. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you, Great. and we'll take a look at that. Obviously, if we feel there's a need, uh, we're certainly going to be the very first uh, to address that need. Uh, the next item is the uh, uh, appointment of a city council member to the Rancho Mirage Writers Festival Board. Uh, Isaiah, if you would, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. Um, we have two council members that uh, also serve on the Ranch Mirage Writers Festival Board. Uh, one of those council members was Dana Hopart. So upon his resignation from the council, there is now a uh, council vacancy on the Ranch Mirage Writers Festival Board. Um, Jamie Cabler, uh, the Writer Festival uh, founder uh, and the guy that makes it all happen, uh, he respectfully requests that Mayor Ted Weil uh, be appointed to uh, the Writers Festival Board. Uh, with that, that concludes my staff report. And uh, before we move to the council, uh, we can open up the public comment if any member of the public would like to speak on this item. Now is the time to do so. If you're participating remotely, you would use the raise hand button on Zoom or star nine on your telephone. And Christy, I'll let you do any in-person comments. Okay, I have no speaker cards on this item. Does anyone in the audience wish to speak? And there is no one. All right, we have no one on our remote audience. So we'll close the public comment period for this item and I'll turn this back over to you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Jose. Is there anybody on the council that would like to make any comments? Ted, is this a one-year appointment? Yes. Who is our other council member who is, a, um, who is on the board? There are two uh, council members. Iris. Iris is on the board. Iris, okay. And let me just say uh, that uh, I, Dana and I have both been on that uh, board since its inception. So uh, if this is going to be a one-year position, then that changes that aspect of it. So these appointments are in place until they're changed by the council. Okay. So uh, if the council, whoever the council appoints today, they would be on the uh, Writers Festival board until that is changed by the city council. Okay, great. I just wanted to clarify that, that how it has been in the past. Are there any other council comments? Well, I will say they think that uh, Mr. Wild will make a, a good addition to the Writers Festival Board. Uh, I will say I have been on, uh, I've been a dues paying member <laughs> uh, of that uh, since the uh, very start. 
Uh, thank you. Okay, I'll entertain a motion. All right. I will make that motion that the Library Board City Council nominate and appoint a Mayor Ted Weil to the Rancho Mirage Writers Festival Board. I'll second. And I'll second that. Nope. There's a motion and a second. Roll call, please, Christy. Council Member Downs? Approved. Council Member Kite? Yes. Council Member Smotrich? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Townsend? Yes. Mayor Weil? Yes. Motion carries 5 0. Thank you. Uh, that, uh, that concludes the formal part of our meeting, and uh, our erstwhile city attorney is now visible on the screen uh, to uh, familiarize our, ourselves with those items being covered in the closed session. Uh, if you would, Steve. Good afternoon, Mr. Mayor and Council. Uh, the Council is now going to recess into closed session pursuant to Government Code Section 54956.9D1 regarding existing litigation known as Vacation Rentals, Rental Owners and Neighbors Rancho Mirage, Rancho Mirage Vacation Rentals LLC et al. versus City of Rancho Mirage. The Council will also confer with legal counsel pursuant to Government Code Section 54956.9D4 regarding one potential initiation of litigation item. And those are the only two items we'll be discussing in closed session. So I'll see you on the other side. Very good. Thank you, Steve. Uh, we will now recess into closed session. It's uh, 3.30 and the City Council took no reportable action in closed session. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you.